and welcome back to Live at the Lakefront 2023. We are halfway through our shows here at Live at the Lakefront, but don't worry, there's plenty more music to come. This week, Chicken Wire Empire. You're not gonna wanna miss it. I'm going to the racing to see my pony run. And if I win, then we back. Sure gonna have some fun. When they say we can't get married, they say I'm help students achieve their career goals in so many ways, but sometimes our finances outside of school can get in the way of staying focused on our goals. That's why MATC offers Fast Fun. Let's meet Elizabeth Francis and learn more about what they got to offer. I am the current executive director. Um, previously, it was, it was founded about six years ago by Dr. Michael Rosen, and at the time he had just retired as he had been an economics instructor here for about 29 years. And then he had been um, the union president at AFT 212 for 17 of those years. And upon his retirement, he founded this organization. It was initially run all by volunteers, and then it's just grown like crazy. And so I took over a year and a half ago as the first paid employee. Students have been able to find great financial help through Fast Fund these last six years. But not only that, they're the only source of assistance for GED and ESL students. I mean, expenses that students need help with are all over the board. I mean, it's every basic need you can think of. It's with childcare, it's with toiletries, it's gas, you know, tuition, debt that they owe to the college so they can re-enroll, books, that sort of stuff, rent. Um, you know, something that I think a lot of community members probably don't know is that uh, Wisconsin Community College students face about $8,000 of unmet need every year. So after that student gets all of their FAFSA, their federal financial aid, their Pell Grants, they get any scholarships and grants, they contribute whatever they can, their you know, estimated family contribution, there's $8,000 of stuff that they like cannot afford. And so there, it's a constant struggle, right? And um, we just would rather have students be able to concentrate on their studies and so we can help pay for some of those things. In the previous years, donations come from faculty, staff, and community members, but only recently they've been receiving private and public grants. Like ultimately my goal, you know, at the Fast Fund is not only helping students with direct aid, but we also are here to like advocate on students' behalf so that things change at the college, so that you all are better served and you are taken care of and there's like more wraparound services, right? So what I'm always saying is like to the college, to the administration, is like put me out of a job. You know, like I don't want to have to have this job. I wish that that things at the college were such that students were taken care of throughout their education at MATC, but they're not. And I'm not, it's not a blame game, it's just, it's just the reality of the situation, so let's work together to try to change that. With the help of sponsors and your donation, the Fast One can continue helping students with any needs. 
whatever the, the restrictions may be, we're trying to lift those barriers. We're trying to not make it difficult to get help. Um, so if they just go to our website, which is matcfastfund.org, there's a tab that's for students, they fill out the application, and we have a volunteer staff that we try to get in touch with people within 24 to 48 hours. I'm producer Madison Lovro, and you're watching Another Hidden Gem KE. The We Got This program was started to give the kids a positive role model to look up to and to keep them out of trouble. Through June to August, they come down to 9th and Ring Street to help tend the gardens for the day. On Saturdays, they meet up, then go around the neighborhood picking up trash, heading back to the garden to work, then finishing up by going to empty lots to prep them for transformation into a garden. The kids then get paid $20 for their time spent on cleaning up the community. When it's a little warmer out and the garden's in full bloom, they have about 75 to 80 kids come out to help. And last year, they put in a thousand hours of work into the garden. The program was started by Andre Lee Ellis. After seeing violence around his community, he looked to an empty lot across the street. Wanting to start a garden, Andre and a handful of boys got together on a Saturday in 2013 and made that empty lot into what it is today. The program has been running for almost 10 years now, and it helps teach kids skills like communication, collaboration, and problem solving, all the while providing food for the neighborhood and giving kids the opportunity to dream again. And that looks like all the time we have for this in Jump K. I'm student producer Mass and Lavro. See you next time. Hello, my name is Charles Anderson, and today we're going to be interviewing Haley Weber here at the Food Pantry. Since you are one of the food coordinators for this place, correct? Mm -hmm. So, uh, how much food do supplies do you guys receive within a week? That's a really good question. So, our partner is Feeding America, southeastern Wisconsin, and we are allowed to order from them twice a week, mm -hmm. and we can get as many you know pounds of food as we want, um, but we have to order at least 500 pounds of food every order to get it delivered. Since we're considered a small food pantry, um, we have we do have limits on like the items that we can get, but in general, the amount of food is pretty pretty open. So we can get you know pallets and pallets and pallets of food, but the options are based on what um, Feeding America has in inventory. So it's at least 500 pounds every order um, with various different foods. So is a food pantry only open to students or anybody that's like an outsider can come in here as well? So that's a really interesting question. Our food pantry is designed to serve MATC students. However, we are a collaboration of community organizations in the Student Resource Center, so we do end up serving community members as well. Um, while we want to make sure that most of our food goes directly to MATC students so that you guys can all be successful on campus, um, we won't turn anyone away. So we are open at the downtown location, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Tuesdays were open 10 to 4, and Wednesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays were open 10 to 6 because we want to be able to accommodate some of those students that go to night classes. If students aren't comfortable coming during the regular hours, you can make an appointment with me and then we can go in just together. Um, I know the food pantry is not always the most comfortable place for people to visit, so we want to make sure that it's as comfortable as it can be. Um, the other campuses, however, all have their own hours, and so you want to connect, connect with the um, student life coordinator at each location and they can give you the hours for those. But they're primarily any kind of office hour, so 8 to 4 most days, we're going to be here and accommodate you. One of the things is um, about our hours, like we just have students staffing, which is cool because you guys all support each other in our food pantry, um, but if there's no staff, our, our student resource center staff is happy to help people. We don't want students to go hungry on campus. I think that sometimes coming into the Student Resource Center and particularly particularly the food pantry can feel a little bit daunting. And I just want you all to know that everyone here is here to support students. We understand that that you may have needs that, that you know, it might be your toughest day and you just need a snack. Um, please come in and speak with us. If you're hungry, just come. Just come and visit us and, and we're not going to let you go, go home um, with not a full stomach. From video games to effects and movies, animation is expanding. 
Instructor Tim Decker dives into the MATC program. The skills that are developed in our program are basically drawing and more, te- you know, more technical skills and software using uh, software like Adobe Animate, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, 3D Studio Max. Um, we work with Unity Engine. I mean, a lot of the skill set I think is based upon drawing and the ability to work digitally. And that's where everything has gone. In my day, it was all traditional where we hand drew everything on paper, but now it's all digital and we do it all on the computer. And the kids have to be aware of that. They have to be aware that they're going to be drawing and they're going to be creating things and it's a lot of work to make animation and to model and to make things in 3D but it'll pay off in the end. The animation projects within the program help shape those skills that students formulate during this learning experience. I would have to say one of the projects a lot of kids look forward to is the Letters of Santa. And that's a fun project and I usually try to handpick a few students to work on that, the ones I know they can get it done. And I work with them on pre-production and then from the pre-production they jump into the production and I think they have a lot of fun doing it. And um, other things they look forward to doing is when the chances come, people come to METC wanting the animation done and they all like to jump on that stuff. But I think really the kids that come here really come in here with hope and a desire and then we have to get their talent moving. So I think any project is exciting. The career potentials for animation are excellent. 2D and 3D animation are being used today in many more ways than in the past. There are some opportunities. There are opportunities for the students to go to work in advertising and uh, modeling for industry. You know, Briggs and Stratton, those guys, John Deere. Um, there's stuff like that going on, but there's also TV production where the kids are doing title treatments and things like that for animation for shows and newscasts. Um, in Milwaukee, there's a lot of things like, in like I said, in advertising and website design and things like that. But I really think. My advice to my students is to take advantage of the 2 plus 2 that we have set up with UWM and at Columbia and Chicago and to get that BFA, to get that Bachelor's of Fine Art degree because eventually when they turn 50 they might want to think about teaching. They might want to fall back on some teaching after they've had a family. They might want to go on and do something else with their careers. But the degree carries a little weight and it carries a little bit more money in your wages. So I, I know I think the two-year degree is a great thing, but I push to go on for four. Whether you're interested in 2D or 3D animation, commercial animation, character rigging, or even just an artist, the animation program is a good fit for those who want to get creative. Hey there, everyone! Student producer Elias Bailey here with another hidden gem KE. This 74-foot tall lighthouse on Wall Avenue along the lakeside has been part of Milwaukee since 1855. The original lighthouse was a shore until 1887 when the present lighthouse was built in its current location. The lighthouse and grounds were maintained by lighthouse keepers, and later on the United States Coast Guard, until October 13, 2003 when the United States Coast Guard handed ownership over to Milwaukee County, making this gem a permanent part of Lake Park. Between 1836 and 1850, Wisconsin's population increased from a mere 11,000 in 1836 to over 305,000 by 1850, all of this due to immigration. This lighthouse was the first thing the immigrants saw when they entered the new land they would soon call home. This lighthouse serves as both a beacon of change and a symbol of Milwaukee's upbringing. The lighthouse is open to the public every Saturday and Sunday. Schedule a tour and learn more about what makes this a great gem. Unfortunately though, that is all the time we have for today. I'm student producer Elias Bear and this has been another hidden gem KE. I'm going to keep looking around. Keep it 
MATC is offering many specialized programs to students to pursue in the creative industry pathway. For many students, the instructors they meet at MATC are the first connections they make in their field of study. The photography program is no different, giving students all the resources they need to be prepared for work in the industry. The role I specifically play here, aside from being a photography instructor, is I'm, I'm involved in, in mentoring and working with the students on a day-to-day -day basis. It's one thing to just instruct in a classroom, but outside of the classroom is where a lot of the real learning can happen, because it's being involved in the community to some degree in teaching the students what they need to know to get a job out there in the industry. In our day-to-day -day lives, photos play a more important role than ever as a means of communicating with others. With camera technology having become widely accessible, there are still a lot of misconceptions of photography as an art as well as a profession. A lot of people think of photography as point your camera and click. It's not really that simple. There's a lot of physics that goes into it, there's a lot of science and math. There's a lot of technical knowledge that you need to get a grasp of in order to use your camera, in order to get that ultimate photo that you're going for. I think that when students come into our program, they have a certain expectation of what the photography program will be. And I think when they come in, it's kind of shocking in some ways that there's such a wide breadth of information in this program. And there's so much to photography that they're a little bit blown away in the fact that there's a lot more to it than they ever thought that there would have been. The expectations in this program, I'd say they're higher. Your first year is a little more chill. Your first semester, they're just kind of like, here's your camera, here's a couple basic things. Go out and shoot. Just be creative, have fun, do your thing. You start with a camera. You start with the basics of the camera, and you move up from there, learning along the way how to use this equipment to better suit your needs. Depending, of course, on what area you decide to focus on, that can change. The program runs the entire gamut of photo disciplines and tools to ensure students develop the skill set they need to succeed in the type of photography they want to specialize in. An interesting dynamic that happens in a college like this is we have these incredible diverse classes and everybody comes from a very different background and everybody comes with totally different personal expectations. The industry is so vast that everybody being different Students want to be a portrait photographer, other students want to be a wedding photographer, some students want to be an architectural photographer, some people want to do still life, depending upon what a student's interests are. A lot of classes are offered in the photography program, whether that be basic fundamentals of photography themselves, to the fundamentals of the software we use, and as the years go on, that steps up in difficulty to more advanced, more technical content. Definitely second semester <laughs> is a lot. It's pretty hard, but it's once you get past it, it's a really good feeling because now you kind of have that like base that you need, and then after that, other classes just build upon the fundamentals you learn. The students get hands-on uh, experience working with this high-end equipment. Yeah, I personally believe we have got one of the best equipped photo studios in academia in the state. We have $50,000 cameras, we have great lights that you can use, studio spaces, stands, anything that you can imagine. We try to source for those students. Going on further, you have to pick up a few more basic parts of equipment. This is my color checker. This is what the inside looks like. Every different lighting situation, if you take a picture of this and you go on your computer and there's like a little color sampler tool, it records that lighting and makes your images accurate. This is my light meter and it tells me what to set my camera to. You want to point it wherever your light is and that's how I'll get accurate light. While photography requires a lot of technical knowledge and study, it is still a creative craft that these artists put their passion and personal expression into. It's that passion within you that drives you. And if you have that passion, you can do anything. And it's that passion that I see in my students that just, it brings a smile to my face. Devin, an alum that graduated 12 years ago, reminisces on where his education from MATC has brought him. I graduated from the TVP television production program at MATC. After Devin's career at MATC ended, he continued to pursue TV production and now works at a TV station local to Milwaukee. 
I work at WISN 12 in the uh, staging department. Um, I'm a floor director and stagehand. In the next five years, uh, my career, I love it here. I love my job. So hopefully I'll just still be doing this. Uh, maybe be a department head, uh, head of staging would be, would be a great place to be. MATC offers many programs in different fields. No matter the field, MATC will equip its students with the skills they need to be successful in their intended industry. Devin looks back at some of those skills that he learned during his time at MATC. Uh, skills I took away from school um, to here are pretty much all of them. Everything I did at school I do here, so that includes lighting, getting mic checks, uh, running camera. I, even though I don't run camera here, I'm, I do hop on a camera to like set a shot if someone's in the control room from time to time. Um, hanging lights, hang a lot of lights, um, using light boards and going on shoots remotely. The pro the program was a lot more than I expected. I, going into it, I just had a small interest in making videos, but coming out of it, I learned how to do pretty much anything I could at a television station. Um, a great memory I have from MATC is going on shoots with all my classmates around Milwaukee, um, learning, messing up, learning, going out again, getting yelled at by Kevin, um, you know, just having the experience to, of like real world television production. As Devin has looked back at his time here at MATC, he has some things to keep in mind for students nearing the end of their education here. And more specifically, some things to keep in mind as a TV production student. Advice for students nearing graduation. Make sure to use all the resources that the school provides you. Um, it is pretty much what they have there it will help you do everything you need to do here. Make sure to white balance, check your iris, um, don't give up, it's going to be tough, <laughs> but you'll have a great time and you won't get sick of it. A lot of people that I work with right now went to the same program as I did, I, even people I graduated with and many others before me, so it's a good com camaraderie at MATC, the friends you make there are you'd probably be working with, and uh, you learn everything you need to know. Alongside others to provide a broader learning experience for students. So is the case for the audio production and music occupations programs. While two different programs both offer many similar studies with the use and understanding of sound and music. Well, since this is a trade school, like any other trade, like electrical engineering or plumbing, I, we, we treat the music industry in that regard. So as a, a student, you'll learn to be a professional guitarist or a professional drummer or bassist or singer or what have you. And of course, we also have the audio engineering program. Program, uh, which involves uh, all manner of production and mixing and mic placement and uh, uh, live sound and a great deal of other concepts. The audio has so many different outlets that you can go into, uh, but our classes tend to focus on like audio software very broadly. So all the areas of audio that you can do will all use software in, in certain ways, but they're using the same tools. So it's becoming comfortable with those tools and the software, so in whatever field you go into, you'll still know how to use it. The audio and music programs have many opportunities to bring their knowledge to good use, whether on their own or working together. Both programs will usually participate in large ensemble concerts or recording sessions to benefit the learning and application of skills through every student in both areas, as well as an array of outside practice and events. Robbie Highway, the chair of the music program and audio program, has a band called P-Tech Performance Techniques, and they're going to play uh, at least two concerts a year. I have a band called Honors Ensemble. We have ensembles one through four, and these ensembles play live shows down here in the C Auditorium, and they are engineered by the live song classes, and we put it all together. There are classes where the audio productions uh, students are a part of, like we have performance performances and the audio production students will set up for those performances and sometimes will record those performances. Audio production and music occupations can either be taken on their own, although many students choose to take both courses to fully hone their abilities with sound and music. I took a lot of 
audio classes my first year and throughout the first year I started to realize that I also really like classes from music occupations so now I'm looking to get better at composing and start composing and also producing for artists as well. Some people will need the music experience to be able to get further into the audio business because of the fact that a producer, if you want to be a producer, if you want to be an engineer, it's let, you don't really need that much information about music theory, but if you're a producer, you want to be able to like go into a studio, your studio, and be able to pick apart somebody's music and say, okay, this would help, and then mix it correctly, you know, do everything you need to do. So both of these programs, audio and music, they, they're passions that people have that, uh, you know, I feel like both of these programs can really just sort of ignite something. Um, where if you're not really sure what you're getting into, you have a chance to try this, to, to explore it. And, and to me, what's really important is that students have the chance to like make something their own in a class. Definitely, if you are looking to be a music producer, take classes from both because at first I was only taking classes from the audio engineering side, which is useful to know, definitely, but I also have enjoyed learning theory and that's been a really big part of evolving as a music producer and a composer. These programs offer great hands-on experience and opportunities to students who have a passion for music or audio. And for most students, one cannot be learned without the other. Chicken Wire Empire rides the line between traditional bluegrass and contemporary. 2022 release Fresh Pickles features all the original music by Minnesota songsmith Chris Castino, reimagined in Chicken Wire Empire style. With the love from their friends, local scenes, and families, Chicken Wire Empire looks towards the future intended to strengthen the Wisconsin bluegrass scenes and further the appreciation of acoustic music. Join us Wednesday, August 2nd, for the return of Chicken Wire's Empire performance at Live at the Music. Once again at Live at the Lakefront, I'm Shannon O'Dwyer. Stick around next week for the Blues Disciples. We'll see you there. Because it's Rotary's 110th anniversary. We've been in existence, the Rotary Club of Milwaukee, 110 years. Got a big group up in the pavilion up there, and it's going to be just a great party. My name's Tom Gale. I'm with the Rotary Club of Milwaukee. And tonight, you're, we're going to enjoy Chicken Wire Empire here at the Rotary Amphitheater. And these concerts are made possible by some great sponsors, starting with Discovery World, Bartolotta Restaurant Group, Harbor House Restaurant, Tito's Homemade Vodka, and they're selling Tito's up there. Get yourself a, a picture or two of there. Mandel Graphic Solutions, 
Milwaukee PBS. This is being broadcast live on the World Wide Web. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Nelson and Schmidt Marketing Communications and the Rotary Club of Milwaukee with Executive Director Mary McCormick, who's here, our president, Leslie Hauser, you'll meet her at the intermission, and Dan Nelson, Jr., who puts this all together. He's a member of our Rotary Club and chair of the Maritime Committee that puts this all together. Tonight's special sponsor who's making this possible for our 110th anniversary is the Zilber Foundation, and we always thank Rotary member Steve Chevalier with Zilber, who makes that possible. The Zilber Family Foundation is is a private uh, grant-making institution dedicated to enhancing the well-being of individuals, families, and neighborhoods. They work with and support nonprofits and communities to address basic needs and ensure personal safety, increase access to social and economic opportunity, and improve the quality of life in neighborhoods across the entire city. So a couple of housekeeping issues. Uh, first of all, we have food tonight over at the food truck, and that group is, let me tell you their name, I gotta look that up on here. But they've got uh, fried green tomato sandwiches, steak sandwiches, and a whole variety of some southern cooking, which is gonna be good. The red truck, to my right, way over there. Make sure you get over there and, and enjoy yourself. The bar service, right up on the top of the stairs up here. Restrooms are in the center of the building. But I'll let you in on a little secret. There's a couple restrooms down below here in the tunnel. You don't have to go that far away to find a restroom. So that's a, a good thing, If especially about halfway through the night. That might be very important. Carol's Kitchen and Catering, that's what it's called. Parking, well, you know about parking. A little crazy tonight because of the triathlon that's going to be going on over the next couple days. So that was a little challenging. But you're here, so it must not have been an issue for you to make it down here. Um, if you want to watch tonight, watch this live, or call somebody at home to say, hey, you can watch it live, here's what you do. You go to live at the lakefront.com forward slash streaming. That's www.liveatthelakefront.com forward slash stream. And they can watch this live. You, this will also be put together and rebroadcast at another time. Uh, so you'll be able to watch it again. And if you look at the Rotary website, it'll tell you how to make all that connection. Very cool. Um, and that we want to thank the guys and gals from uh, MPS here. Not MPS. From PBS, wrong initials, sorry about that. They're doing all of this and having a great time doing it. So I think it's about time for a little bit of music. Again, this is pure Americana tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, you are going to love this group. We've had them many times before. Please put your hands together for Chicken Wire Empire. <laughs> Hey everybody, how's it going? That's Tom right there, that's one of the best MCs in the business. Everybody just relax, we're gonna play a nice first set and then we're gonna play a nice second set of music for y'all. Can you feel it?
got the sun peeking through and everything, everybody. Everybody. We're Chicken Wire Empire featuring the weather today. The wind sounds wonderful. <laughs> Eventually we're going to play a song on that boat. I know what's going to happen.
Oh, train, I go weary with the miles and I miss the freedom that we buy. I was just thinking about this. I already ruined it. Last, last time we did this, we made a point to not speak the entire first set, which was really hard for me and nobody else. Yeah. What? Yeah. Remember that? Any, anybody's first time here to this concert event? Anybody? Couple, handful of people. Isn't it nice?
for a taxi or a warm and cozy place to lay me down. Said I'm standing all alone in Richmond with the cold Virginia rain falling down. Folks, over here we got Star Moss on guitar. Thank you. Give it up, folks. Star Moss on guitar. One more time for Star Moss on guitar. All right, we're gonna we're gonna stick with the blues theme. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Star and I, we just we just had some oysters together, didn't we, guy? I gotta say thanks to Jordan for uh, lending <laughs> me a couple fries there. It's getting pretty dire. He wouldn't split an oyster with me. I don't know. <laughs> hey, we got John Pike on the banjo, folks. <laughs> the one and the only. And if you don't know this, he's got a very famous banjo. It's actually an award-winning banjo. 
Uh, didn't your banjo win some award? <laughs> yes, I guess so. I guess it did. It, it, it won a Mama, which is the Madison Area Music Awards, and it's what, how, how was it phrased? It was, it was the banjo of the year. <laughs> banjo of the year, ladies and gentlemen, John Pike. <laughs> Many years ago. Yeah, man. I'm surprised you remember that story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna have him do a fitting number for a guy named John to sing. <laughs> Thank you. 
summertime, apples in the fall. If I can't have a girl I love, don't want none at all. She'd grow my little love, she'd grow my darling. She'd grow my little love, I'm by my shady
summertime.
Hey everybody, thank you so much for coming out to see us. We don't, sometimes it feels like we never play Milwaukee and then sometimes it feels like we get to do it a ton. And this summer's just been great for that. We do have some merchandise somewhere over there. Uh, it's up those steps. And uh, we really appreciate your support in uh, buying a little piece of merchandise to take home with you. Well, this next one is a, it's a favorite of ours when we started getting to pick a little bit with Star. And uh, hope you enjoy it. Fellow works on the river, all slapped by paddle wheel. And you say he's old fashioned. 
Hey, everybody, that's Star Moss. One more time, Star Moss. Thank you.
myself a mountain cabin home where that sky's just a blue shade of blue and i got everything required for my body and mind and soul i got water grub crossword puzzles too don't call me up cause i ain't got no phone find someone else to pick your little bone Folks, we're going to do one more. We're going to take a little pause for the cause. They got some more announcements, grab some drinks, do all that stuff. Uh, we're going we're gonna to do one more for you. Hey, thanks, folks. We'll be back in a couple minutes for y'all.
Ah, uh, that was Chicken Wire Empire, ladies and gentlemen. How about that, huh? You know, the only thing that disappoints me, we got this beautiful area up here, a nice dance floor, and nobody's dancing. Second set, got to see you out there. They're going to be back in about 30 minutes. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Live at the Lakefront. This is our fourth. Wow, what a great show. Stick around for more Chicken Wire Empire after the break. MATC is offering many specialized programs to students to pursue in the creative industry pathway. For many students, the instructors they meet at MATC are the first connections they make in their field of study. The photography program is no different, giving students all the resources they need to be prepared for work in the industry. The role I specifically play here, aside from being a photography instructor, is I'm, I'm involved in, in mentoring and working with the students on a day-to-day -day basis. It's one thing to just instruct in a classroom, but outside of the classroom is where a lot of the real learning can happen, because it's being involved in the community to some degree in teaching the students what they need to know to get a job out there in the industry. In our day-to-day -day lives, photos play a more important role than ever as a means of communicating with others. With camera technology having become widely accessible, there are still a lot of misconceptions of photography as an art as well as a profession. A lot of people think of photography as point your camera and click. It's not really that simple. There's a lot of physics that goes into it, there's a lot of science and math. There's a lot of technical knowledge that you need to get a grasp of in order to use your camera, in order to get that ultimate photo that you're going for. I think that when students come into our program, they have a certain expectation of what the photography program will be. And I think when they come in, it's kind of shocking in some ways that there's such a wide breadth of information in this program. And there's so much to photography that they're a little bit blown away in the fact that there's a lot more to it than they ever thought that there would have been. The expectations in this program, I'd say they're higher. Your first year is a little more chill. Your first semester, they're just kind of like, here's your camera, here's a couple basic things. Go out and shoot, just be creative, have fun, do your thing. You start with a camera, you start with the basics of the camera, and you move up from there, learning along the way how to use this equipment to better suit your needs. Depending, of course, on what area you decide to focus on, that can change. The program runs the entire gamut of photo disciplines and tools to ensure students develop the skill set they need to succeed in the type of photography they want to specialize in. An interesting dynamic that happens in a college like this is we have these incredible diverse classes and everybody comes from a very different background and everybody comes with totally different personal expectations. The industry is so vast that everybody being different Students want to be a portrait photographer, other students want to be a wedding photographer, some students want to be an architectural photographer, some people want to do still life, depending upon what a student's interests are. A lot of classes are offered in the photography program, whether that be basic fundamentals of photography themselves, to the fundamentals of the software we use, and as the years go on, that steps up in difficulty to more advanced, more technical content. Definitely second semester <laughs> is a lot. It's pretty hard, but it's once you get past it, it's a really good feeling because now you kind of have that like base that you need, and then after that, other classes just build upon the fundamentals you learn. The students get hands-on uh, experience working with this high-end equipment. Yeah, I personally believe we have got one of the best equipped photo studios in academia in the state. We have $50,000 cameras, we have great lights that you can use, studio spaces, stands, anything that you can imagine. We try to source for those students. Going on further, you have to pick up a few more basic parts of equipment. This is my color checker. This is what the inside looks like. Every different lighting situation, if you take a picture of this and you go on your computer and there's like a little color sampler tool, it records that lighting and makes your images accurate. 
This is my light meter, and it tells me what to set my camera to. You want to point it wherever your light is, and that's how I'll get accurate light. While photography requires a lot of technical knowledge and study, it is still a creative craft that these artists put their passion and personal expression into. It's that passion within you that drives you. And if you have that passion, you can do anything. And it's that passion that I see in my students that just, it brings a smile to my face. Devin, an alum that graduated 12 years ago, reminisces on where his education from MATC has brought him. I graduated from the TVP television production program at MATC. After Devin's career at MATC ended, he continued to pursue TV production and now works at a TV station local to Milwaukee. I work at WISN 12 in the uh, staging department. Um, I'm a floor director and stagehand. In the next five years, uh, my career, I love it here, I love my job, so hopefully I'll just still be doing this. Uh, maybe be a department head, uh, head of staging would be, would be a great place to be. MATC offers many programs in different fields. No matter the field, MATC will equip its students with the skills they need to be successful in their intended industry. Devin looks back at some of those skills that he learned during his time at MATC. Uh, skills I took away from school um, to here are pretty much all of them. Everything I did at school I do here, so that includes lighting, getting mic checks, uh, running camera. I, even though I don't run camera here, I'm, I do hop on a camera to like set a shot if someone's in the control room from time to time. Um, hanging lights, hang a lot of lights, um, using light boards and going on shoots remotely. The program was a lot more than I expected. I, going into it, I just had a small interest in making videos, but coming out of it, I learned how to do pretty much anything I could at a television station. Um, a great memory I have from MATC is going on shoots with all my classmates around Milwaukee, um, learning, messing up, learning, going out again, getting yelled at by Kevin, um, you know, just having the experience to, of like real world television production. As Devin has looked back at his time here at MATC, he has some things to keep in mind for students nearing the end of their education here. And more specifically, some things to keep in mind as a TV production student. Advice for students nearing graduation. Make sure to use all the resources that the school provides you. Um, it is pretty much what they have there it will help you do everything you need to do here. Make sure to white balance, check your iris, um, don't give up, it's going to be tough, <laughs> but you'll have a great time and you won't get sick of it. A lot of people that I work with right now went to the same program as I did, I, even people I graduated with and many others before me, so it's a good com camaraderie at MATC. The friends you make there are you'd probably be working with and uh, you learn everything you need to know. Alongside others to provide a broader learning experience for students. So is the case for the audio production and music occupations programs. While two different programs both offer many similar studies with the use and understanding of sound and music. Well, since this is a trade school, like any other trade, like electrical engineering or plumbing, I, we, we treat the music industry in that regard. So as a, a student, you'll learn to be a professional guitarist or a professional drummer or bassist or singer or what have you. And of course, we also have the audio engineering program, uh, which involves uh, all manner of production and mixing and mic placement and uh, uh, live sound and a great deal of other concepts. The audio has so many different outlets that you can go into, uh, but our classes tend to focus on like audio software very broadly. So all the areas of audio that you can do will all use software in, in certain ways, but they're using the same tools. So it's becoming comfortable with those tools and the software, so in whatever field you go into, you'll still know how to use it. 
The audio and music programs have many opportunities to bring their knowledge to good use, whether on their own or working together. Both programs will usually participate in large ensemble concerts or recording sessions to benefit the learning and application of skills through every student in both areas, as well as an array of outside practice and events. Robbie Highway, the chair of the music program and audio program, has a band called P-Tech Performance Techniques, and they're going to play uh, at least two concerts a year. I have a band called Honors Ensemble. We have ensembles one through four, and these ensembles play live shows down here in the C Auditorium, and they are engineered by the live song classes, and we put it all together. There are classes where the audio productions uh, students are a part of, like we have performance Performances and the audio production students will set up for those performances and sometimes will record those performances. Audio production and music occupations can either be taken on their own, although many students choose to take both courses to fully hone their abilities with sound and music. I took a lot of audio classes my first year and throughout the first year I started to realize that I also really like classes from music occupations. So now I'm looking to get better at composing and start composing and also producing for artists as well. Some people will need the music experience to be able to get further into the audio business because of the fact that a producer, if you want to be a producer, if you want to be an engineer, it's let, you don't really need that much information about music theory, but if you're a producer, you want to be able to like go into a studio, your studio, and be able to pick apart somebody's music and say, okay, this would help and then mix it correctly, you know, do everything you need to do. So both of these programs, audio and music, they, they're passions that people have that, uh, you know, I feel like both of these programs can really just sort of ignite. Um, where if you're not really sure what you're getting into, you have a chance to try this, to, to explore it. And, and to me, what's really important is that students have the chance to like make something their own in a class. Definitely, if you are looking to be a music producer, take classes from both because at first I was only taking classes from the audio engineering side, which is useful to know, definitely, but I also have enjoyed learning theory and that's been a really big part of evolving as a music producer and a composer. These programs offer great hands-on experience and opportunities to students who have a passion for music or audio. And for most students, one cannot be learned without the other. Chicken Wire Empire rides the line between traditional bluegrass and contemporary. Their 2022 release, Fresh Pickles, features all the original music by Minnesota songsmith Chris Castino, reimagined in Chicken Wire Empire style. With the love from their friends, local scenes, and families, Chicken Wire Empire looks towards the future intended to strengthen the Wisconsin bluegrass scenes and further the appreciation of acoustic music. Wednesday, August 2nd, for the return of Chicken Wire's Empire performance at Live at the Music. Justice. 
MATC is offering many specialized programs to students to pursue in the creative industry pathway. For many students, the instructors they meet at MATC are the first connections they make in their field of study. The photography program is no different, giving students all the resources they need to be prepared for work in the industry. The role I specifically play here, aside from being a photography instructor, is I'm, I'm involved in, in mentoring and working with the students on a day-to-day -day basis. It's one thing to just instruct in a classroom, but outside of the classroom is where a lot of the real learning can happen, because it's being involved in the community to some degree in teaching the students what they need to know to get a job out there in the industry. In our day-to-day -day lives, photos play a more important role than ever as a means of communicating with others. With camera technology having become widely accessible, there are still a lot of misconceptions of photography as an art as well as a profession. A lot of people think of photography as point your camera and click. It's not really that simple. There's a lot of physics that goes into it. There's a lot of science and math. There's a lot of technical knowledge that you need to get a grasp of in order to use your camera, in order to get that ultimate photo that you're going for. I think that when students come into our program, they have a certain expectation of what the photography program will be. And I think when they come in, it's kind of shocking in some ways that there's such a wide breadth of information in this program. And there's so much to photography that they're a little bit blown away in the fact that there's a lot more to it than they ever thought that there would have been. The expectations in this program, I'd say they're higher. Your first year is a little more chill. Your first semester, they're just kind of like, here's your camera, here's a couple basic things. Go out and shoot. Just be creative, have fun, do your thing. You start with a camera. You start with the basics of the camera, and you move up from there, learning along the way how to use this equipment to better suit your needs. Depending, of course, on what area you decide to focus on, that can change. The program runs the entire gamut of photo disciplines and tools to ensure students develop the skill set they need to succeed in the type of photography they want to specialize in. An interesting dynamic that happens in a college like this is we have these incredible diverse classes and everybody comes from a very different background and everybody comes with totally different personal expectations. The industry is so vast that everybody being different Students want to be a portrait photographer, other students want to be a wedding photographer, some students want to be an architectural photographer, some people want to do still life, depending upon what a student's interests are. A lot of classes are offered in the photography program, whether that be basic fundamentals of photography themselves, to the fundamentals of the software we use, and as the years go on, that steps up in difficulty to more advanced, more technical content. Definitely second semester is a lot. It's pretty hard, but it's once you get past it, it's a really good feeling because now you kind of have that like base that you need and then after that other classes just build upon the fundamentals you learn. The students get hands-on uh, experience working with this high-end equipment. I personally believe we have got one of the best equipped photo studios in academia in the state. We have $50,000 cameras, we have great lights that you can use, studio spaces, stands, anything that you can imagine. We try to source for those students. Going on further, you have to pick up a few more basic parts of equipment. This is my color checker. This is what the inside looks like. Every different lighting situation, if you take a picture of this and you go on your computer and there's like a little color sampler tool, it records that lighting and makes your images accurate. This is my light meter and it tells me what to set my camera to. You want to point it wherever your light is and that's how I'll get accurate light. While photography requires a lot of technical knowledge and study, it is still a creative craft that these artists put their passion and personal expression into. It's that passion within you that drives you. And if you have that passion, you can do anything. And it's that passion that I see in my students that just, it brings a smile to my face. Devin, an alum that graduated 12 years ago, reminisces on where his education from MATC has brought him. 
I graduated from the TVP television production program at MATC. After Devin's career at MATC ended, he continued to pursue TV production and now works at a TV station local to Milwaukee. I work at WISN 12 in the uh, staging department. Um, I am a floor director and stagehand. In the next five years, uh, my career, I love it here, I love my job, so hopefully I'll just still be doing this. Uh, maybe be a department head, uh, head of staging would be, would be a great place to be. MATC offers many programs in different fields. No matter the field, MATC will equip its students with the skills they need to be successful in their intended industry. Devin looks back at some of those skills that he learned during his time at MATC. Uh, skills I took away from school um, to here are pretty much all of them. Everything I did at school I do here, so that includes lighting, getting mic checks, uh, running camera. I, even though I don't run camera here, I'm, I do hop on a camera to like set a shot if someone's in the control room from time to time. Um, hanging lights, hang a lot of lights, um, using light boards and going on shoots remotely. The program was a lot more than I expected. I, going into it, I just had a small interest in making videos, but coming out of it, I learned how to do pretty much anything I could at a television station. Um, a great memory I have from MATC is going on shoots with all my classmates around Milwaukee, um, learning, messing up, learning, going out again, getting yelled at by Kevin, um, you know, just having the experience to, of like real world television production. As Devin has looked back at his time here at MATC, he has some things to keep in mind for students nearing the end of their education here. And more specifically, some things to keep in mind as a TV production student. Advice for students nearing graduation. Make sure to use all the resources that the school provides you. Um, it is pretty much what they have there it will help you do everything you need to do here. Make sure to white balance, check your iris, um, don't give up, it's going to be tough, <laughs> but you'll have a great time and you won't get sick of it. A lot of people that I work with right now went to the same program as I did, I, even people I graduated with and many others before me, so it's a good com camaraderie at MATC, the friends you make there are you'd probably be working with and uh, you learn everything you need to know. Alongside others to provide a broader learning experience for students. So is the case for the audio production and music occupations programs. While two different programs both offer many similar studies with the use and understanding of sound and music. Well, since this is a trade school, like any other trade, like electrical engineering or plumbing, I, we, we treat the music industry in that regard. So as a, a student, you'll learn to be a professional guitarist or a professional drummer or bassist or singer or what have you. And of course, we also have the audio engineering program, uh, which involves uh, all manner of production and mixing and mic placement and uh, uh, live sound and a great deal of other concepts. The audio has so many different outlets that you can go into, uh, but our classes tend to focus on like audio software very broadly. So all the areas of audio that you can do will all use software in, in certain ways, but they're using the same tools. So it's becoming comfortable with those tools and the software, so in whatever field you go into, you'll still know how to use it. The audio and music programs have many opportunities to bring their knowledge to good use, whether on their own or working together. Both programs will usually participate in large ensemble concerts or recording sessions to benefit the learning and application of skills through every student in both areas, as well as an array of outside practice and events. Robbie Highway, the chair of the music program and the audio program, has a band called P-Tech Performance Techniques, and they're going to play uh, at least two concerts a year. I have a band called Honors Ensemble. We have ensembles one through four, and these ensembles play live shows down here in the C Auditorium, and they are engineered by the live song classes, and we put it all together. There are classes where the audio productions uh, students are a part of, like we have performance 
performances and the audio production students will set up for those performances and sometimes will record those performances. Audio production and music occupations can either be taken on their own, although many students choose to take both courses to fully hone their abilities with sound and music. I took a lot of audio classes my first year and throughout the first year I started to realize that I also really like classes from music occupations so now I'm looking to get better at composing and start composing and also producing for artists as well. Some people will need the music experience to be able to get further into the audio business because of the fact that a producer, if you want to be a producer, if you want to be an engineer, it's let, you don't really need that much information about music theory, but if you're a producer, you want to be able to like go into a studio, your studio, and be able to pick apart somebody's music and say, okay, this would help, and then mix it correctly, you know, do everything you need to do. Both of these programs, audio and music, they, they're passions that people have that, uh, you know, I feel like both of these programs can really just sort of ignite something. Um, where if you're not really sure what you're getting into, you have a chance to try this, to, to explore it. And to me, what's really important is that students have the chance to like make something their own in a class. Definitely, if you are looking to be a music producer, take classes from both because at first I was only taking classes from the audio engineering side, which is useful to know, definitely, but I also have enjoyed learning theory and that's been a really big part of evolving as a music producer and a composer. These programs offer great hands-on experience and opportunities to students who have a passion for music or audio. And for most students, one cannot be learned without the other. Chicken Wire Empire rides the line between traditional bluegrass and contemporary. Their 2022 release, Fresh Pickles, features all the original music by Minnesota songsmith Chris Castino, reimagined in Chicken Wire Empire style. With love from their friends, local scenes, and families, Chicken Wire Empire looks towards the future intended to strengthen the Wisconsin bluegrass scenes and further the appreciation of acoustic music. Join us Wednesday, August 2nd, for the return of Chicken Wire's Empire performance at Live at the Booth. Holy smokes, folks. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Hey, we love playing down here. We've done it a couple of times. It's always a pleasure to be back. Thanks for having us. We're going to get a little weird to set.
the clock runs out and the curtain starts to fall. Cause there ain't no life in hand to me if you never have it all. I'm crying for the old days and running from the next. As long as I keep running, I'll never find no rest. And I keep waiting for the grass to grow greener on my side. Ain't in a million, you'll never find your stride.
get a job and get out of my life. I'm making black and blue with the time wasted on you. So get a job and get out of my life. Yes, just keep on walking with your head hanging low. Another time, another year, another place for you to go. Now just keep on moving on my head held high. Another time, another year, I guess it's time to say goodbye, say goodbye. We've been working way too hard with that old show. I guess that's kind of ground when the man's keeping you down. So get a job and get out of my life. And all the stars above know we can't pay bills with love. So get a job and get out of my life. Yes, just keep on walking with your head hanging low. Another time, another year, another place for you to go. I just, I just realized y'all were up there. Hey, and how's everyone over there? Everyone over there good? And all you folks? Should we, should we see who's the loudest? Over here, you guys go first. Hey, how about over there? Up top. Or not. I think we all know who won that one. <laughs> So we got a guy uh, over here on the, uh, uh, the uh, I got so many names for the guitar, but it's just, it's just the guitar. We got Star Moss here on the old 47 flat top, Martin guitar, box. And uh, he 
wrote this song. This has been one of my favorite songs of the summer that we've gotten to play, and I really appreciate it. Fiddling the song. One of the best, buddy. said that if we were ever going to add a Dobro player, the only person that could do it that we would add would be Jerry Douglas. And uh, two weeks ago, we were in New York for Gray Fox Music Festival, and that dream actually came true. I went over to, uh, to the Porta John, and who was sitting by <laughs> picking to a fence, but Jerry Douglas was right there, and he came up and... Uh, he said, uh, I love you guys. You guys are the best. I'll, of course I'll sit in with you. And so we had him sit in for this song that he actually recorded with us. If you want to take it home with you, this one's called The Ballad of Dan Toe. And uh, on our studio album, it features uh, Chris Castino, Jerry Douglas, and Peter Rowan. And we called them, and they said they couldn't make it here today. So we're going to do it without them. Hope you like this one.
he hung upon his chest. He wrestled a cyclone or so, I'm told, to prove he was brave like King David of old. When the rivers of Texas grew dangerous high, we kept him laughing for fear he might cry. Dance a pending 
The Ballad of Dan Toe. No one knows what happened to him. We'll still, what is it? We'll never, we'll never find out. Never. I even asked the guy who wrote the song, I said, what happened to him? And he goes, well, what do you think happened to him? And that was all. You ready? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we gotta do one for the bartenders back there. They're doing a great job, wetting whistles. Whistles. Well, I'm just a bartender, and I don't like my work, but I don't mind the money at all. I see lots of sad faces, lots of bad places. Folks with their backs to the wall And I need four walls around me To hold my life Keep me from going astray And a honky-tonk angel to hold
everybody make sure to buy John a couple beers after the show. If you can find them. <laughs> Holy smokes, folks, how's everyone doing? We had to, we had to do a slow one. We had to get, we had to get the uh, award-winning banjo, you know, a little, a little feature on that last one. <laughs> what award did it win? It, it won a mama. It's the uh, Madison Area Music Award for best banjo. The player himself, not too bad. Banjo. Is that a pre-war? <laughs> Man, I keep on going, oh, that's bad. I keep on getting stuck in the cracks now. You lost your cord. So, I'm so going to share another little story with you while I have the mic here for a second. And uh, I lost the end pin uh, rubber foot for my bass. So I've been using wine corks. And uh, this one has been defeated by this stage. So if you got any wine drinkers out there, I'll take a cork. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're on the lookout for a cork if any of y'all, uh, you know, happen to know that. In the meantime, how are y'all doing? Oh, look at that. That was cool. Oh, we got two corks. That's a lot of wine. Ask for one, you shall get two. Sometimes that's how it goes. How about this view, folks? Doesn't get much better. We love being on water. We are actually on water right now. In fact, you were talking about the uh, immensity of the danger of dropping your pick around here. You might end up over in Michigan at some point. But uh, in the meantime, here's a song that I wrote, not about this water, about some other water, some, uh, some water in the Mississippi River and the folks that ride the barges up and down the river. In fact, one time I was in a bar over there in the Winona area and some guy came wheeling in all bandaged up. I said, what happened to you? He said, I was coming up the river from St. Louis and I fell off the boat. Apparently that can do some real damage and I decided that's worthy of writing a song about. Uh, but I didn't write the song about falling off the boat. I wrote the song about all the perks of the job. And it's a song called Barge. And it goes something like this.
Thank you.
folks, one more time for John Pike and Ernest Bruce Bartis on the fiddle and banjo. Those are, uh, those are two of the best pickers in the Midwest. That's 100%. They don't like it when I say it, but if I don't say it, you know, then, you, then they don't hear it as much. Hate it. <laughs> Every time I hear it, I hate it. <laughs> folks, uh, I wrote a song um, not so long ago in a parking lot after a gig in about two seconds, and I sent it over to John, and I said, hey, John, can you arrange this and make it uh, cool? And this is, this is what we did with it. Two, three. Though I'm not a rich man, I still know my worth, and I'd make me an honest living if I'd ever went to work. But these days, these days go, by, go by so quickly And I ain't, ain't got, got time, time to waste yeah. So follow me, follow me Down to the banks of the deep blue sea Follow me, follow me If ever there was a time when you get there, then you'll see There's more to life than money and greed When you get there, then you'll see If you open up your eyes But these days These days Go by Go by so quickly And I Ain't got time To waste For the Peace of mind is worth it For the rhythm fills you whole For the love of one another For the healing of your soul For my sisters and brothers For my neighbors next door We can build it all or burn it down Or just let it soar But these days These days so quickly and I ain't got time to waste I'll spend all my money I'll lay all day in bed and I'll go out every night so I'll sleep well when I'm dead these days go by so quickly and I ain't got time to waste there's a pretty little angel waiting for me and I can already see her face but these days, these days go by, go by so quickly, and I ain't got time to waste. No, I ain't got time to waste. No, I ain't got time to waste. Oops. I just want to tell this guy right here that love is everywhere. Your shirt is awesome. It's a great shirt. It's true. If you look for the right stuff, you'll find the right stuff. You know what I mean? If you guys go around looking for a bunch of conflict, you're going to find it. That's, that's all my preaching. That's all I got to say. It's true. And since love is everywhere, here's a song called Still in Love Everywhere. I retitled it just now. Flowers, baby, every day I make love you, yeah 
fresh cut grass, big bells that hang, a lot of baby dance with me, carry you away. Now it's falling on us, look at that moon.
everybody. Thanks for being here. We're Chicken Wire Empire. We love playing for you all. I gotta tell you all, every time I look out there, I see a bunch of faces I recognize. Thank you for supporting us. I appreciate it so much. We all do. And it's, it's great to have a bluegrass community here in the Upper Midwest. We appreciate you all. Thank you all very much. Appreciate you. Love you. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Chicken Wire Empire. How about that, folks? Great sound. Terrific sound. You know, we got a nice dance floor out there. It'd be Jordan, do you think you guys could do at least one more dance for them out there? Let them hear it, folks. Yeah! Oh, we also got to say how we got a birthday out there. Joanne Anton's friend Joyce right up there. Joanne said they've been friends for a long time. Happy birthday, Joyce. They met in rehab, I'm told, many years ago. Please put your hands together for an encore for Chicken Wire Empire. You guys, it's one of the best MCs in the biz right there. Give it up for everyone putting this thing together. Rotary Amphitheater, it's a beautiful place for a concert series. Um, I think also about two weeks ago, we released a Dead EP on Spotify. Check it out. Uh, it's uh, called Barry Garcia. We play a bunch of Jerry tunes. Yesterday was birthday, so we got to do a Jerry tune. Take you down 
Thank you, Chicken Wire Empire. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah! Thank you. Thank you very much on behalf of the group. This is the Rotary Club of Milwaukee sponsored this. This is our fourth of eight concerts for this season. We got four more. We'll be back next week with the Blues Disciples. You're going to love that. Listen, drive safely, and we want to thank again our sponsors who make this possible, starting with the Rotary Club of Milwaukee, Discovery World, Bartolotta's Restaurant Group, Harbor House Restaurant, Tito's Handmade Vodka, Mandel Graphic Solutions, Milwaukee PBS, and the Nelson Schmidt Marketing Communication. Tonight's sponsor was the Zilber Family Foundation. They sponsored this tonight. It was so good of them to do that. We had a lot of fun. My name's Tom Gale. We'll be back next week at 6 o'clock. Remember, we go rain or shine. If it's raining, we go into the pavilion. We'll see you next week for the Blues Disciples. Please drive carefully. Thank you. for joining us once again at Live at the Lakefront. I'm Shannon O'Dwyer. Stick around next week for the Blues Disciples. We'll see you there. for joining us once again at Live at the Lakefront. I'm Shannon O'Dwyer. Stick around next week for the Blues Disciples. We'll see you there.